Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. It's September 20th, 2023. I'm Jason Weil from AWS, and this is the Jupiter Lab Weekly Call. Uh, we currently have 14 participants on the call, which are all humans, I hope. And uh, we have a few items on the agenda here. Um, I'll paste in a link to the agenda. Looks like Eric G is first up. Yep. So. I've had uh, a lot of good and positive feedback on the proposed new uh, documentation working group that spans uh, the entire Jupiter org. So um, we're trying to I'm trying to decide on a first meeting date when that would be and what time it would be. So um, I have a tentative kind of proposal of uh, two weeks from now, so October 4th. Um, so it would be weekly on Wednesdays and it would be an hour before this meeting. so, uh, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, so uh, if anyone has thoughts about that, uh, jump in and uh, uh, let me know. Um, but um, yeah, the the new working group proposal is going well. Um, we have some people already commenting and expressing interest, uh, but if you're interested, we definitely need you. If you're interested in um, having better uh, Jupyter documentation, or if you're interested in writing it, or if you're interested in um, doing a lot of other related tasks that are not writing docs, like some autom uh, some automations uh, and some other some other items. You can read more on the proposal in the uh, meeting notes there. Um, but yeah, if you're interested at all, please uh, just comment on that thread and uh, uh, look out for that uh, first meeting uh, two weeks from now. All right. Thanks so much, Eric, for setting this up. Um, it, this is going to be Wednesday, you said 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific. Is it going to be a half hour long? Half hour, yeah. Okay, cool. That's what I'm proposing anyway. If anybody has any other thoughts, I, we can change it. And is it on the shared is, is it on the shared calendar yet? It is not. I just wanted to, to gather some feedback today, but I will put it on the shared calendar. Uh, oh, okay. And how do I do that, actually? <laughs> do you have access on the Google Calendar to do that? Probably not. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you send me email with like the details of what you want me to add? Because I know I have access to it. So I'll send you my um, email address as a DM. So why don't you just shoot me email with like what you want me to add half hour okay. this time recurrently. Yeah, I'll do that. Zoom okay. channel, all the good stuff. Thanks. So, so is the proposed time, um, do I get it right, half an hour before Jupyter Notebook meeting? Correct, yes. All right. Mike's got the thumbs up going. Thank you, Mike. Cool. Any other questions, discussions about the writing working group? Yeah, so the plan is for the first meeting for us to talk about uh, basically writing a charter for the group. Um, and then once we have that, we can go to the uh, software steering council and get some official recognition. So that's kind of what we're trying to do the first meeting. All right. Thanks everyone. Um, so I'm next up on the agenda. Um, I have an item on behalf of my teammate Piyush, who unfortunately could not be on this call today. Um, there is an open. There are a couple of open pull requests on CondaForge to add packages that my team has built. Um, one Andrew mentioned towards the end of the notebook call concerns Jupyter Scheduler. That is green. We're just waiting for someone to approve it to get it merged in. Um, the other is for Jupyter AI and Jupyter AI Magics, which are two packages that we built. Um, we are getting errors on the pipeline and also errors when building this locally because one of our dependencies, FICE CPU, is not getting pulled in, but a similar package, FICE, is. Um, but this is causing the build to fail because the needed packages are not showing up on PIP check. So this is blocking us from some projects that affect some internal stakeholders here. I'm wondering, are there any folks on this call who could help out with debugging or identifying where we can improve this CondaForge recipe? Uh, 
I see a hand raised from Frederick. Um, I'm not sure to follow exactly uh, the dependency trouble uh, because yeah, yeah, basically you have two two possibility here. So uh, running pip check in the test is a good practice. It's not mandatory, but it's a good practice. And if it's failing, uh, normally what you should do is you should open a PR on the uh, recipe of the your dependency that's actually not checking pip. So to make that, that recipe better. Uh, if not, Go ahead. If not, the only way you can you can work around is by removing the pip check. It's not such a great idea, but I don't see another solution. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm hoping that we don't have to come to that, especially because Conda is so uh, enthusiastic about recommending that. Okay. Any other questions, comments about this? Um, so I wanted to use this as an opportunity maybe to ask Fred. So I earlier asked uh, Nick, and uh, maybe you have any advice on getting our PRs uh, you know, reviewed and approved, especially my scheduler, because it's green. I cannot really help. I mean, did you try to ping uh, the team on the guitar channel? Uh, yes. Yeah. But uh, it's been probably less than 24 hours ago. So, you know, maybe uh, it will still help. So, but yeah, thank you. That's, you know, that, that, that's a good advice. It, it will help. Uh, yeah, thank you. I mean, if next week is still open, like, just uh, raise the point and I try to contact some people that should have the rights to, to, to review it and merge it. I don't personally. Yeah. So fun. Okay. Sorry, I was just updating the notes there. Um, and thanks, Mike, for offering to ping folks um, who might be able to help at Quantsite. Um, okay. Well, thank you all for indulging us on that. Um, Frederick is next up with a member rights proposal. Yes, yeah, just a reminder. Uh, I think only three members have even uh, voted. Uh, so just a reminder that you have up to tomorrow to vote. Otherwise, we have reached the, the quorum. Um, so the follow-up uh, would be that I will set up a boat that will uh, ask for every members if they want to stay members of the full council and also on the subgroups that have right for release and, uh, and administration. And uh, once that is done, then uh, we'll update uh, the, the teams on GitHub, NPM, and uh, Jupyter. So uh, for people that have high rights, like uh, release stuff, uh, expect to receive uh, emails from uh, PyPy because we're going to uh, switch to use the new uh, PyPy organization. And so you're going to be invited to, to join there so that you, you will have, it will be easier for, for the, the Jupyter console and Jupyter Lab console in part, particular to manage rights. Um, and the other point is an announcement. So we finally got the first version, uh, pre-release version of NBDime that's compatible with Jupyter 4. I uh, really want to to thank people that got involved, especially Florence, Mike, and Vidar. Um, and uh, so there are still rough edges. So uh, don't hesitate to to test the pre-release. So you can do the usual uh, pip install dash dash pre uh, to do, to install it locally. Um, and don't hesitate yet to to look to, uh, at the at the code if you have time and enough knowledge or uh, fix issue and report report bugs that you are seeing. Yeah, and that's all for me.
All right. That's awesome news about NB Dime because I know I've been working with some folks who are very keen on getting Jupyter Lab Git available for um, um, for Jupyter Lab 4. And this is a big step forward on that. So thanks and congratulations to the team for all the hard work on that. On, on that specific point, as you mentioned it, Jason. Uh, so I started uh, the work of uh, integrating the latest version. So that, that uh, ProRes version of NVDime in Jupyter Lab Kit. Uh, is, yeah. I hope to get something by next Wednesday uh, because uh, uh, I want to. So we have some work to do for the diff of plain text uh, in the Jupyter Lab Git extension to be able to use the same uh, code than NBDIME is, uh, is using um, as everything has migrated now to the new code mirror six stuff. So yeah, I, I hope to get something by, by next Wednesday. Um, so also that people can start trying and, and see if everything goes smoothly, at least as smoothly as possible. All right. Um, well, if there's no other questions or comments on that one, um, Mike is next up with a couple a couple of topics. Mike, you want to go ahead? Sure. Thank you. I, I, I had a quick question if, uh, about the Git thing, if that's possible. Go for it. Um, so, <clears throat> is there a um, like I'm thinking about the uh, single uh, notebook use case? Um, so if I'm like a classic user or notebook user, is there a way to open up the Git UI in just its own window, for example, or would you have to use it in Jupyter Lab, or is there even a way to access it in classic? So uh, for, for now, there is no version for this compatible with notebook seven. Okay. Uh, but, but there's there's always been a notebook and be a, a classic extension for notebook six and older. Previously, uh, notebook seven is not. Yeah, I think that's the feature oh. I was thinking about, Vidar. Thanks for reminding me. I forgot about that. Um, yeah. So so there is a standalone div um, view that can be launched from command line. Is that what was um, done by the classic extension, or did it have? Well, so there's two things, right? You can use NBDIME as a CLI tool without having Jupyter Lab or Notebook installed. You need Jupyter Server, right? Um, it will still work with Notebook uh, if, you, if that's the only thing uh, you have installed and you don't have Jupyter Server installed, but that's that's a separate question. Um, so you can you can use that no matter what version of anything you have. And then it is the question of uh, integrations with Notebook and and lab where you um, basically like the default buttons that the NB extension has is if you use um, checkpoints, you can diff with the checkpoint. Or if you have the get extension, it will just diff your current um, working state versus the last commit, right? It is a button on the toolbar that does that. Yeah. And then so, so you have the get. Uh, Git extension that uh, does more fancy stuff on top of that. So it, it sounds that it should be reasonably easy to integrate that. Uh, the, the new lab extension should already provide that and work in Node 7, just a question of testing it and ensuring that the patterns work. Yeah, as long as the HTML stuff works, it, it opens that in um, like a new tab, right? So it's. Um, the HTML should work. So yeah, um, it's, it's just a button. So it's not hard. Um, and then the rest is the same API that renders for this, the SCLI things. So I don't think this is the reason why it shouldn't work, although I didn't test it with Notebook 7 explicitly. Thanks for all that history, Vidor. Okay, um, so carrying on, um, Jupyter Lab LSP uh, 5.0 release candidate is out. This uh, fixes 
compared to the previous priorities uh, completion. And that should work with Jupyter Lab for 06 that was released last week and Notebook 704 just released today. Um, yeah, please test it out if if you are interested in the features that LSP provides. And um, my other, on the other point is that uh, there is a couple of pull requests which still have needs review uh, label. If anyone has time to help with that, I would appreciate. And also, if you would like to have your pull request reviewed, um, adding this label helps to prioritize what is ready, especially if it went over uh, the first page of pull request, because otherwise it gets easily lost. All right, thanks, Mike. Um, any other questions, comments about these, these topics? Thanks for flagging up the pull requests that need review as well. Looks like we have four of those out, outstanding. All right, we're about 23 minutes past the hour. Um, are there any other topics that people would like to discuss on the record? Well, hearing none, uh, I'm take that as not a topic on the record. Um, I'm going to try to find the stop recording button. Brace yourselves for off the record discussion in three, two, one.